Hello viewers, I'm Mwesugu Amguwa Bosco, the head teacher Wisdom Center, that is in Karumuna. Yes, uh, as a science teacher, I'm again back, yes, that we look at uh, different activities, yes, from the work that uh, we have been looking at in the previous sessions. Yeah, so for this time, we want to move ahead and look at uh, uh, these questions for vision. Yes, the first question goes, uh, the table below shows a group of animal kingdom arranged in subgroups, P, Q, R, and S. Uh, we are asked to st yes, study carefully and answer questions that follow. Yes, so uh, when you look at uh, the question, we need to first analyze to understand it, look at each subgroup, and then uh, we are able to answer the questions that follow. Yes, uh, let us look at subgroup P. In P, we have uh, bat, we have monkey, whale. Yes, so when you look at this, we can simply understand that these are mammals. Uh, yes, we can move the second subgroup, that is Q. Q, as we look at the frog, newt, toad from our previous lessons, we can see that these are, uh, these are amphibians. Yes, and then uh, the third one, uh, subgroup R. Look at arrow, we have lizard, we have snake, we have, uh, and then a crocodile. Yeah, we can see there's examples of reptiles, and then the last subgroup, as far as this table is concerned, it is S. In S, we have ostrich, we have kiwi, we have kite, and simply from our previous work, you can see that uh, uh, these are birds. Yes, so from there, then we can simply go ahead and, uh, and answer questions that we are asked to answer after understanding this table. Yes, so we have said that P, the mammals, Q, yes, the amphibians, Ara, uh, the reptiles, and S, the birds. So these are the four subgroups we are looking at this time. The first question goes, uh, to what group of animal kingdom do all the above belong? Yes, now looking at the previous work, we found that uh, all these are uh, the mammals, the, the amphibians, the lizards, and uh, birds. Yes, these subgroups are classified as vertebrates. So they asked to what group of animal kingdom do all the above belong? Yes, so we can simply say they belong to invertebrates, they belong to invertebrates. To va sorry, sorry. These are uh, we said vertebrates. Okay, yeah. Sometimes can happen. So we are saying they belong to vertebrates. Okay. Simply, we said last time that these animals, what you call the vertebrates. They have got backbones, and looking at these subgroups, they have the backbone. Uh, we can move ahead to part B. Uh, part B says, uh, name the subgroups represented by the letters P, Q, R, and S. Yes, just as I discussed, looked at this, uh, examples in the groups, so we can find P. Yes, P, those are mammals. Mammals. Uh, mammals, okay. Then we just go back to Q. Yes, Q. Yes, these are uh, amphibians. 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 These can also be called the detritions for the amphibians. Uh, then let us go to Ara. Yes, the lizard, the snakes, the crocodile. Yeah, these are. Reptiles, reptiles, okay. And then, then lastly, that is S, where we have the ostrich, we have kiwi, we have the kite. Yeah, simply we find that they are birds, okay. Birds. Yeah, these are four of the five subgroups of vertebrates. So we can go ahead and look at the next question uh, for the purpose of revision, such that when you come next time or you find you need such questions, 
to be very easy for you. Yes. Uh, number six says, identify one difference between the animals in the subgroup R and S. Yes. So last time, we looked at the features or characteristics of each subgroup of vertebrates. So now this can help us look at the, dif yes, the different features. Uh -huh. So when you look at, when we look at uh, Ara, yes, Ara here, yes, these are reptiles. And then S, yes, these are birds. So we are asked to look at, the, to identify the, dif uh, the difference between these two subgroups. So we can see which feature is not uh, in uh, 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 reptiles, but it is not in birds. So simply we can look at uh, uh, the main features. Let us talk about uh, the kind of the, the cold blood and the blood animals. We can see that uh, Ara, I put here, okay? We can see part Ara, uh, this Ara, these are uh, reptiles, okay? Yes, so these reptiles are cold blood. So we can say Ara, Ara, uh -huh. Ara are cold blooded, are cold blooded animals. Yes, then while, while S, while S, which are the birds? While S are warm blooded. Yes. So simply this gives us a, a very clear difference. So the Ara, they are, warm, they are cold blooded, and then S are warm blooded. Uh, so we can uh, move ahead uh, to the next question. For, from C we go ahead to D, yes? For part D we ask, to what, uh, in what way is the subgroup P related to subgroup S? and the subgroup Q to R. So when we talk about relationship, we see how are they similar, okay? The other side, it was about the difference. We don't find in the other group, but for this case, you want to see how are they similar. That's the relationship. So let us look at P again and S. For P, yes, P, we say the P, these are mammals, okay? Yeah, so uh, we, are, we want to see how P is similar to S. How are they related? Yes, we said that P, yes, P, uh, P they are, yes, P they are mammals, and then S, they are birds. Yeah, birds are also animals, by the way. Yes, so we can see uh, the similarity between these animals. We find the mammals are warm-blooded, and then birds are also warm-blooded. So that's kind of feature which is linking them, we can say. We can simply state both are, both are, both are warm-blooded animals. Both are warm-blooded, both are warm-blooded animals. Okay? Yeah. Then, uh, we can go ahead to Q, Q and R. So Q to R, how are they similar? Please let us check out from our table. Uh, yes, where is Q? Yes, Q. These are amphibians. And then R, the reptiles. Yes, we looked at last time in our flow chart and we found that these animals are cold blooded, which can be also called ectothermic. So you can say both are cold-blooded animals. Both are cold-blooded animals. Okay? Yes, so uh, when we say that uh, 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 amphibians are cold-blooded and then rep reptiles are cold-blooded, that gives a relationship. That way, they are linked together. Uh, then now uh, we go to E. We are asked, uh, how are the eggs of the fish fertilized? Yes, remember, last time we looked at uh, types of fertilization. 
We found that some animals undergo uh, internal fertilization and others undergo external fertilization. So we see that for fish and amphibians, they undergo external fertilization. Whereas uh, the other side of the reptiles, the mammals, and the birds, for them they undergo internal fertilization. So for this case of this question, we asked to, uh, yes, to explain how the eggs of the fish are fertilized. Yes, since fish undergo external fertilization, we can say that the eggs of the fish are fertilized externally. So we can briefly answer that they are fertilized. They are fertilized. They are fertilized externally. Externally. Yes. They are fertilized externally. Meaning their fertilization takes place outside the body. And if you go ahead, this will be a similarity to amphibians. So you will also be asking how amphibians uh, and fish related in terms of reproduction. So we can simply that they are, or in terms of fertilization, you can say they are fertilized externally. Then part F, we asked her, uh, what characteristics enable birds to fly? We asked to give just two, okay? Let us, uh, if you go to birds, as last time we looked at birds, yes, when you see uh, birds, okay, like the ostrich, for it, it has actually got uh, more weight. Uh, it's the, uh, look at this, if you look at an ostrich, an ostrich is actually like the heaviest bird among all the birds. And we remember more about the ostrich, the fastest and, uh, and uh, heaviest bird. So for this majorly, find that times becomes hard for it to fly and those just go to weak, weak wings compared to its body or its weight. Uh, the kiwis also, yes, uh, I find also they can't fly easily, but look at the kite, the kite can fly, the eagles, the, 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 pen, the, the parrots, so those birds, majorly, we look at what can everybody them to fly. Number one, we can say uh, birds, uh, birds have wings. Birds have wings, okay, that enable them to fly. That enable, that enable them to fly, okay. Uh, and then, the, uh, lastly, uh, these bones also have hollow bones. They have hollow bones, uh, which are uh, actually also enable them to fly because to make their bones, their bodies uh, light for easy flight. Another point also you can look at uh, the, the nature of their bodies. They have, birds have streamlined bodies. They have streamlined bodies. Streamlined bodies. Yes, their bodies have got a sharp pointed, yes, shape, which is streamlined, just as you can see like the fish, look at uh, the airplanes in the air. So our birds are easily are able to fly through air because of the streamlined body to check about their nature of their body. So they, are they have a sharp pointed end, giving a streamlined body for easy flight. Uh, then now uh, we can move ahead to go to number two of our revision work. Uh, yes, we asked, use the head of a bird below to answer questions that follow. Yes, uh, last time we looked at the birds, types of birds, and uh, we say that uh, uh, if you want to classify birds, majorly look at, uh, you look at uh, the head of a bird, you look at the feet, okay? Yes, these two can help you to really look at types of birds and understand them properly. Uh, so for this case, we asked her, uh, yes, uh, to look at this head of a bird. Look at its beak. Actually, the head and the beak, okay? This can give us the type of the bird. So, A, we asked, to what type of birds would you classify the bird above this bird here? So for this case, we are given the head, look at its beak, 
Okay, it has got a curve, a sharp curved beak. So birds with sharp curved beaks that enable them uh, to grip, to tear, okay, or kill their prey. These birds are called birds of prey. So we ask, to what type of birds would you classify? So you can say it's a birds of prey or praying birds. You can call them birds of prey. Birds of prey, yes, or praying birds. Praying birds. Yeah, so these birds feed on meat. They hunt and kill other small animals, other small birds for food. We can call them birds of prey, we can call them praying birds or carnivorous birds. Uh, with this example, maybe you can see the hawks, the eagles. Yes, yeah, they are good examples of birds of prey. Uh, yes, then B, we ask, give a reason for your answer. Yes, simply we can go back to the answer, to, to answer this from B, sorry, sorry, from A. Uh, why do we classify this bird as a bird of prey? Uh, we, can, we say look at, the, look at the beak and then the feet. When you look at their beaks, birds of prey have got sharp curved beaks. So you can say because, so you can say because uh, it has, because it has a sharp, or it has a sharp curved beak. Okay? Yes, these sharp curved beaks help them or enable them uh, to grip, okay, to kill and handle their prey. Yes, if you are to look at the feet, maybe you can, one time you can be asked, they can draw for you, okay? Yes, uh, one time they can draw for you the feet of such a bad, which bad type of bird is that? Just look at uh, the feet of these birds and see if it's a foot, okay? These ones, these birds have got curved toes, sharp curved toes. These ones we can at times, or in other words, call them talons. You see? These are, we can call them talons. Talons. So these ones, they enable the bird to handle their prey. So birds of such, such a foot simply say uh, they are praying birds, we can say they are carnivorous birds, or birds of prey. Yes, so we can move ahead uh, to number four. Uh, the diagram below shows a type of eggs, okay? Yes, here we looked at different eggs of different birds, now uh, different animals like uh, mammals, birds, Mammals have don't majorly, we say there are some mammals which lay eggs, but look at uh, those which lay eggs majorly. Look at reptiles, amphibians, and fish. So which eggs, which type of egg, which type of bird, sorry, which type of animal will have these eggs? So these eggs majorly are, they are for frogs, which are the amphibians, frogs, toads, uh, salamander. So those animals, uh, their eggs are fertilized outside. They have external fertilization. So we can now answer number A. A we asked, which animal lays such eggs? Yes, so you can simply, this is a frog, okay? Uh, then B, to what group of vertebrates does the above animal belong? Since we are saying it's a frog and I've been classifying frogs, amphibia, frogs, toads, samanda, and amphibians. So you can say uh, it belongs to amphibians. We can say uh, it belongs, it belongs, belongs to amphibians, okay, belongs to amphibians. Ah, uh, yes, then we can now move to number three, which is our next question. Uh, this number uh, says, the diagram below is of a fish, okay? Then we are asked to name the parts. Uh, this is very important. As we last time we looked at this, we said that right from primary before we look at uh, 
uh, fish, you look at parts of the fish uh, uh, and the, the functions of all. So for now, let's check on this quickly and see. Uh, yes, if you have named this, there are different parts we can look at. Maybe simply from here, uh, we can say this the mouth. Okay. Uh, let us look at this nostril. Okay. The nostril. Immediately, there are two nostrils. Then, uh, you can look at this. Okay. This is the eye. Uh, yes. We have this part here. Okay. This is the dorsal fin. Dorsal fin. Uh, yes. Can move. We have a line. This line here. Uh, immediately, if you look at a uh, physical part of the fish outside, you may not see it. But uh, this, uh, this, this part here, this is called lateral line. Lateral line. Uh, we shall look at uh, maybe their functions. Okay. Uh, we have more parts we can check on. Yes, we have this part here. Gill cover. Gill cover. Yes, some, some, some friends can confuse this part uh, and call it gills. For the gills, they are found inside. But the outer part, the gill cover, which will cover the gills or to protect gills. Gill cover is also called operculum. Also called operculum. Operculum. Okay. Uh, then I uh, have this fin here. Yes, this fin. This is called a pectoral fin. Okay. Uh, pectoral fin. Okay. Yes. And from there, you have another fin here. This is the ventral fin. Ventral fin. Okay. I uh, have the fin which is around the anal area here. Okay. This is anal fin. Yes. Uh, anal fin. Uh, you call this the anal fin. Okay. Yes, we can move ahead. Yes. We have. These ones, okay, you can have this a single end. You can have this. These are scales, okay. And the last thing we can come to the part here. This is the tail fin. Tail fin. Tail fin is also called cord of fin. Cord of fin. Yeah, okay, just for information, uh, you need to know about the functions of this part of the feed, the fish, uh, but right from primal form, we're looking at this, so you can check uh, this, uh, obvious for the eye, you know, for seeing, seeing foods, uh, uh, yes, majorly, uh, yes, or oh, as you're moving in water, swimming in water, then the nostril, this majorly used to smell, smell food, okay, and then, uh, we have the mouth, this is for getting food. Uh, look at the gill cover or paculum. This protects the gills. Yes, okay. Uh, then come here, dorsal fin. This is one of the parts of the fish that help, help uh, let's say, help the fish for protection. So, dorsal fin is for protection. Uh, it can also help any stability of the fish in water when swimming or to immobilize the fish in water. Look at, uh, okay, let's first go to other fins. Uh, look at uh, the, the pectoral fin. This also can, uh, and if you look at a uh, pectoral fin, also help in part of the stability also. Yes, and the moving upwards and downwards, okay, in water. Then uh, we look at uh, the ventral fin, uh, anal fin. This uh, also can help in upward and downward movement, okay, in water. Or simply can say for movement. Uh, come at uh, the tail of fin. This tail of fin, or cord of fin, helps in making corners, turning, okay? Making corners, talk about forward movement, maybe just like to the, uh, to the ventral fin, anal fin, it can also open forward movement, but it can be similar to the, to the tail of fin, though it's most of uh, turning, 
or making cones. Okay, uh, we can uh, be asked about the fish. They can ask you uh, which part, which parts of the fish, okay, or which parts does a fish use for protection? Remember, we talked about the dorsal fin. This part helps in protection. Yes, check on the lateral line here. This is used for sensing danger. If let's say fishermen are fishing and they want to catch the fish, sometimes they will hear, they will get this by through sound waves. So they detect the danger. So the lateral line is for the danger detection. That's also protection. Come to the scales, okay? Here yeah, they also help a fish to protect itself when swimming in the water. Yes, it can't indicate in danger like maybe hitting itself on, on rocks and what. So uh, we can say dorsal fin, lateral line, and scales. These are majorly for protection. Uh, then uh, uh, we can also be asked to uh, look at the benefit of eating fish. Yeah, fish is very important in the way that uh, we can get proteins. Proteins, they are bodybuilding foods. They hope to build our bodies. So this is very common, they can ask you. Uh, the benefit of eating fish, that's, uh, you can say that uh, uh, fish, the source of proteins, as we can also go for other sources. Yes, uh, from here we can move to our questions. That's, that's uh, as we move on, that will be number four. Yes, yeah, we are moving ahead, looking at different revision questions. Uh, number four in our activity says, complete the chart below about animal kingdom. Yeah, yes, this is again takes us back to the classification we looked at last time. So you're given such a, a chart. Yes, you're supposed to understand uh, uh, how we classify the simply the animals, okay, into different subgroups. So we are given A. We need to look at A. Okay, we can look at A here. Yes, and B. So you can see these are the major subgroups of vertebrates, of, sorry, of animals. So we can go up and see for A on our side here. Before you talk, you classify vertebrates or invertebrates, check on the divisions here. In here we have more two here and then the other five here and then two here. This is giving us the side of the vertebrates. So you can say A, we can move here and answer here. So A here, you can say they are vertebrates. Vertebrates, okay. Uh, and then now uh, B, part B. So B, the vertebrates. Vertebrates. Okay? Uh, then let us go ahead and look at C. Yes, when you look at C and D, C and D, these are the two subgroups uh, from the vertebrates. So this having uh, two other more divisions. So this gives us uh, the group of warm-blooded animals because uh, in warm-blooded animals, we have two other subgroups. So we can say C, uh, they are warm-blooded animals. Warm-blooded animals. Okay? Uh, and then, uh, so D, uh, which are the two subgroups of vertebrates? The, uh, they are the cold blooded animals. Cold blooded animals. Okay? Yes, uh, so we have seen C and D. Now we go ahead classifying C. So for C, as you got other two subgroups from the, from the warm blooded animals. We have mammals and birds. So we can say E, E they are mammals, E they are mammals, okay? And then F will be birds, because these are all warm-blooded animals. So remember, uh, D, D was uh, uh, called by the animals, and here we have the three subgroups from uh, the previous session we had. So we can simply begin from G, okay? Uh, then G we can say uh, reptiles, reptiles, and then uh, G, okay, we got H, 
uh, reptiles, they can say amphibians, okay? Uh, amphibians. And lastly, the third one in the quadrupedal animals will be fish. Yes. So remember, uh, for this, there is no order. We can call any of these uh, amphibians, reptiles, fish. As long as they are just, there are three uh, subgroups from the cold body animals. Likewise, to part C also, we say these are cold blood, these are warm blood animals. There is no uh, order that maybe this should be mammals. Any, we can say here mammals and say here birds. As long as all oh, these two, okay, uh, they are from the, the warm blood animals, one either, one either mammals or birds. Yes, we can move ahead and see the next question. We asked, how are vertebrates different from invertebrates? Yeah, simply uh, what we defined last time, I uh, uh, looked at invertebrates, we say vertebrates are animals with the backer bones, and uh, vertebrates are animals without backer bones. Yes. Uh, so we can move ahead. Uh, yes, uh, this kind of revision, I hope, Yes, uh, we are making a proper follow-up because uh, these are some of the questions which can be asked in exams or, or maybe for actually for your understanding. We're supposed to see how we classify different animals. Yeah, so for number six, use the diagrams below to answer questions that follow. Yes, uh, so we are given a snake here, we're given a bat, we are given a, a, this animal here, you can say fly, okay? Uh, yes, uh, yes, we're looking at uh, number six of our revision questions. Yes, you say, use the diagram below to answer questions that follow. Uh, so we are given different animals here, given a snake, given a fly here, given a bat, given a, ba a bird, and a frog. So these are animals from different uh, subgroups, but uh, following the other last session we had, we can now be able to answer these questions. Yes, uh, so from these animals, we are asked a couple of questions here to answer. Here we can see, which of uh, the above animals lay eggs? Yes, uh, from our uh, session, we can see, uh, look at the snake, yes. Snakes are oviparous, so we can say snake. Okay. Uh, then, uh, yes, come to fly. Yes, uh, flies, lay eggs. You can say fly. Uh, yes, come to the bird. Okay, yes. Birds, lay eggs. Come the frog. The frog is also viparous. Okay, yeah, so we can see. Yes, this, the eggs, the eggs, the eggs, the eggs. Yeah, good. Uh, we can then move to the next question. Say the, which of these animals are cold-blooded? Yes, uh, looking at these animals, we can say, look at the snake. Uh, to understand if they are cold or unblooded, quickly run to the subgroups. Because we said amphibians, reptiles, and fish, they are cold-blooded. When you go to mammals and the birds, they are warm-blooded. So looking at this, let's see, uh, snakes. Look at, uh, yes, the frog here. Yes, this is amphibian. Here, reptiles, those are cold-blooded. When you come to the fly here, yes, these are invertebrates. Invertebrates are also cold-blooded, so you can have the third one. So you can answer here, yes, snake, cold-blooded. Uh, Look at uh, the fly, yes, cold blooded, and the frog. Okay? Uh, okay? Then, part C, we asked which of these animals have no backer bone? Yes. Oh, yeah, if you check here, look at uh, the snake, the bat, the bat, and the, fr and the frog. These are all related the, with the, at least the initial of the backer bone. They have a backer bone. But when you come to a, f a, f a, fry, a fly here, a fly is an invertebrate, so it has no backer bone. So you can say fly. And then, uh, last number, 
they identify any mammal from the, from the above diagrams. So look at these animals here. Which is the mammal? Because we looked at, we had different features of mammals, okay? Mammals have hairy bodies, uh, they produce young ones alive, they feed young ones on breast milk. So look at the bat here, compare with a snake. Here it just lays eggs, these are, these are fly lay eggs, here lay eggs, these lay eggs. Uh, look at mammals. Mammals produce young ones alive. So for a bat, we can classify it as the only mammal in this group here. Yes, good. And this is the only flying mammal which we can simply mention. Yes, uh, for today, we can end here for our revision. I hope you have got uh, different questions you have gone through, and I hope uh, this will help you. Please have your time, your time, go through this work we looked at as we come to the end of our session. Find time. Uh, please, still, you can still find us, uh, check uh, on uh, uh, BTN TV channels, uh, check on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter of BTN, uh, and then uh, Wisdom Center website, WhatsApp groups, always you can find us. Please always follow and then uh, get more questions for revision. And I just hope you, as we move on, and even for your forthcoming exams for the PLA, uh, thank you for watching us. May God bless you. Stay blessed.